The Battle of Aqaba was fought for the Red Sea port of Aqaba during the Arab Revolt of World War I. The attacking forces, led by Sharif Nasir and Auda Abu Tayyi and advised by T. Lawrence, were victorious over the Ottoman Empire defenders. Chapter 1 Background Gilbert Clayton had already told Lawrence, the move to Aqaba on the part of Faisal is not at present desirable. This was due to the McMahon Hussein correspondence being superseded by the Sykes Pico Agreement. Lawrence, however, decided to go his own way, without orders. Lawrence called it a private venture, void of British support, since Faisal provided money, camels, stores, and explosives. 257 to 58 The 600 mile desert journey was led by Sharif Nasir, while Lawrence was accompanied by Nesib el Bekri and Auda Abu Tayyi leader of the northern Haritat tribe of Bedouin. Total strength on 9 May 1917, when they embarked, was 45 Haritat and Agil camel men, 269 Aqaba was surrounded by mountains north and east, and connected to the interior by Wadi Itam. The long and narrow gorge could be used by the Ottomans to bottle up any British invasion by sea, though it did not stop the Royal Navy from bombarding the site. By 1917, the Ottoman garrison had grown to 300, mainly Ottoman Arab gendarmerie, up from 100 in 1914. According to Neil Faulkner, the British High Command had long been anxious about Aqaba. The British feared that an Ottoman Aqaba would threaten Archibald Murray's flank, or Ottoman raids could develop into the Sinai, or that it could be used as a base for German submarines in the Red Sea. According to T. Lawrence, the Arabs needed Aqaba, firstly, to extend their front, which was their tactical principle, and, secondly, to link up with the British. Lawrence also says, I was working out with Auda Abu Tayyi a march to the Hawitat in their spring pastures of the Syrian desert. From them we might raise a mobile camel force, and rush Okaba from the eastward without guns or machine guns. The eastern was the unguarded side, the line of least resistance, the easiest for us. Chapter 2 – Battle and Campaign Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Prelude Newcomb and Lawrence contrived to deceive the Turkish army that their objective was an attack on Damascus and Aleppo, drawing attention away from their real goal of Aqaba. The expedition started moving towards Aqaba in May. They lost three men to attacks by snakes in the Wadi Sirhan region, while Nuri Shalan was paid £6,000 sterling in gold for the use of Wadi Sirhan as a base. While in Bear, Lawrence and Auda decided to attack the rail line in the area of Dara, to convince the Turks the main Arab force was at Osrok in Sirhan. Finding no suitable targets that far north, Lawrence and Zal ended up attacking the Atwi station south of Amman, before returning to Bear, 228-263. 269 to 70, 285 to 87, 293 to 94. Chapter 2 Section 2, Abba al-Lasan and Aqaba. Three Haritat clans on Nagb el shtar the Tumaniye, the Derosha, and the Diabat, aided the effort to secure the pass of Abba el lisan along the man Aqaba road. The Tumaniye attacked the Fuwela blockhouse at the pass while the Arab force under Auda and Lawrence attacked the Gadir el Haj garrison along the rail line south of Man, destroying ten bridges. However, the Tumaniye were unable to keep control of the pass when a Turkish relief battalion under Nias Bey arrived, occupying Abba el Lisan, 295-99, 309 Auda personally led a charge of 50 horsemen against the Turkish troops on 2 July while 400 camelmen under Nasir and Lawrence charged into their flank. The result was 300 Turkish casualties and only 160 prisoners, while the Arabs lost two dead. Lawrence was nearly killed in the action after he accidentally shot his camel in the head with his pistol. Auda was hit by six bullets, which destroyed his field glasses, holster, and scabbard, but left him unharmed, 300-05, 664. Three more Turkish posts lay ahead on the way to Aqaba, Buira, Kithira, and Kadra. Buira was captured by Sheikh Umjad by the time Auda and Lawrence arrived, 
and the 120 soldiers in that Turkish garrison had become prisoners. Ketira was taken on the night of the 4th of July, aided by a lunar eclipse. Kadra, at the mouth of the Itm, and its 300-man garrison surrendered on the 6th. Four miles onward, Akaba the sea now lay open, 308 to 12, 664. Chapter 3, Aftermath The Arab force had swelled to 2,000 Hawitat by the end of the engagement, and they had taken 700 prisoners, including 42 officers. Auda established an advance post at Guira with 600 of his clan, which they held for the next month and a half, enough time for the gain of Aqaba to be consolidated, even though the Ottomans were able to retake Abu al lisan and Fuwala. Arab outposts were also established at Nabathian Petra, Delaga, and Batra, along the Man Highlands, 277, 313 to 14, 314 to 15 Lawrence, accompanied by eight others, traveled 160 miles across the Sinai Peninsula via the Mitla Pass to Suez, in 49 hours. At Ismailia Station, Lawrence convinced Burmester and Admiral Weems to send Miss Dufferin to Aqaba with food, bringing back the prisoners on the return trip. Lawrence then took a train to Cairo. In Cairo, Lawrence reported to Clayton and then Allenby, from whom Lawrence requested arms, supplies, an immediate £16,000 in gold to pay debts incurred, and a further 200,000 sovereigns to support his plans to threaten communications with Jerusalem. Allenby promised Lawrence to do what he could, and subsequently told Robertson, even the partial success of Captain Lawrence's scheme would seriously disorganize Turkish railway communications south of Aleppo, while its complete success would destroy effectively his only main artery of communication, 283-115-21 Aqaba became a major Royal Navy depot, supplying and transporting Faisal's forces upon his arrival on 23 August, as HMS Euryalus and then HMS Humber guarded the port. A landing strip was built at Kuntilla, and by August 4 the Royal Flying Corps was bombing Man, Abu al lisan and Fuwala, supplementing continued attacks by Auda on the Hejaz Railway. According to Lawrence, in the next four months our experts from Okaba destroyed 17 locomotives. Traveling became an uncertain terror for the enemy, 312 to 13, 341 to 43, 380. Chapter 4, Popular Culture The campaign and battle was depicted in the film Lawrence of Arabia, albeit with some creative liberties taken and events compressed.